The Minister of the Federal Capital Territory, Yesomwike, has disclosed that the Abuja Light Rail will operate free for two months. Wike stated this during the ongoing ministerial sectoral update to mark the first year in office of President Bola Ahmed Tinubu. Hi, welcome to What's Happening. Here are the top 10 stories. Former Central Bank of Nigeria Governor and 14th Emir of Kano, Muhammad Sanusi II, says it will take a while for the Nigerian economy to bounce back from 10 years of mismanagement. The former CBN governor spoke at the 2024 River State Economic and Investment Summit at the Obiwali International Conference Center in Port Harcourt, the state capital, on Thursday. Senussi pointed out that without going through the process of economic reforms, Nigeria would have walked the path of countries like Zimbabwe, Venezuela, and Argentina, which would not have been funny. He also spoke on lots of other issues, including taxation, saying the government's taxing of the citizens must be sensible and not extortionary. Quoting the late former British Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher, Sanusi said, no country has ever taxed its way to prosperity. At number two, the Minister of the Federal Capital Territory, Nyeso Mwike, has disclosed that the Abuja Light Rail will operate for free for two months after its commissioning on Monday, the 27th of May, 2024. Wiki stated this during the ongoing ministerial sectoral update to mark the first year in office of President Bola Ahmed Tinobu. He, however, urged residents to begin the use of the metro rails from Tuesday, the 28th of May, adding that the goal is to aid the ease of commuting for residents and that the president may extend the free train rides up to six months. The Abuja Rail Mass Transit Scheme consists of eight stations, namely Abuja Metro Stadium, Kukwaba 1, Kukwaba 2, Upa, Idu, Basenjiwa, and Airport Stations. At number three, the House of Representatives has passed a bill to revert to the old national anthem. The bill, sponsored by the majority leader of the House, Julio Sihonvere, passed through the first, second and third reading on Thursday amid opposition from House members. The House leader anchored his argument on the need for patriotism and nationalism. The issue sparks discussions and differing viewpoints during the private session. Former Senate Majority Leader Yahya Abubakar Abdullahi suggested that widespread consultations be conducted nationwide considering the challenging conditions in the country. He emphasized that any attempts to alter the national anthem through a bill might be perceived as an effort to shift focus from the prevailing economic hardships faced by Nigerians. In his contribution, Honorable Kingsley Chinda, member of the People's Democratic Party representing Obio Akbo constituency in River State, noted that the old national anthem was a colonial heritage which should not be considered in a post-independent Nigeria. At number four, former Vice President of Nigeria, Atiku Abubakar, has announced his intention to continue running for the country's presidency as long as his health allows. He said this during an interview on the House of Service of the Voice of America in Abuja. The flag bearer of the People's Democratic Party in the 2023 elections said he's inspired by the story of former American President Abraham Lincoln, who contested many times before he became the occupant of the White House. Atiko, who is 77 years old, has run for the number one office six times, but has been on the ballot as presidential candidate on three occasions, in 2007, in 2019, and in 2023. In a recent interview, he said if, in 2027, his party decides that it is the Southeast's turn and selects Peter B as its candidate, he will readily offer his support. At number five, Justice Lehman Belgori of the Federal Capital Territory High Court has granted bail to a former Minister of Aviation, Hadi Sirika, for alleged fraud to the tune of 19.4 billion naira. Justice Belgori granted bail to the former minister in the sum of 100 million naira and two shorties in like sum. One of the shorties must have a landed property within the jurisdiction of the court. The court also added that the former minister must not travel out of Nigeria without the permission of the court. 
The Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, had charged former Minister of Aviation Hadi Sirika, his brother Ahmad Sirika, and his company, Ingenious Nigeria Limited, with over 19.4 billion naira fraud. The sum is said to be for several aviation ministry contracts from the former minister to Ingenious Nigeria Limited. Prior to this, the anti graft agency had charged and arraigned the former minister alongside his daughter, Fatima, his son-in-law, Jalal Soleh Hamma, and a firm, Albra Global Investment Limited, that were charged with fraud to the tune of 2.7 billion naira. At number six, the Kano State House of Assembly has officially passed a bill dissolving all five Emirate councils in the state. This decision follows deliberations on the floor of the House during a plenary session held Thursday. The significant move came as the Kano State Emirate Council Amendment Bill was considered and passed after successfully scaling its second and third readings. The Deputy Speaker, Haji Muhammad Bello Butubutu, articulated the rationale behind the dissolution. He emphasized that repealing the law that divided the Kano Emirate into five separate entities would help revive the lost glory of Kano. Additionally, the House adopted a motion to create a new second-class Emirate Council in the state, signaling a restructuring of the traditional institutions to better align with the state's cultural and administrative goals. At number seven, Governor Shei Makinde Thursday approved the recruitment of 338 officers into the State Road Traffic Management Authority, or YATMA, to enhance road traffic and regulation across the state. The chairman explained that the approval was in pursuance as a result of the revalidated approval policy signed in 2021. The OYATMA chairman, Major Adesagba Dekoya, made this known in a statement signed by the State Commissioner for Information, Dotsun Uilade in Ibadan. He disclosed that about 2,450 applications were received from qualified candidates. Stating this during the screening exercise held at the Oyatma Operational Headquarters in Ibadan. At number eight, the Nigeria Police Force has announced the rescue of the two daughters of Aminu Ardo, a member of the Zamfara State House of Assembly, who were abducted in November 2022. Announcing the rescue of the victims in Abuja, the Inspector General of Police, Kayo Diegbesoku, stated that the rescue was made possible through the collaborative efforts of various security agencies coordinated by the Office of the National Security Advisor. According to the police, the children were initially abducted with their mother and other siblings, but the mother managed to escape during the rainy season of 2023 with two of her children, leaving behind the other two, Mariam and Nana Asma'u. And at number nine, the Economic Community of West African States, ECOWAS Parliament, has elected the first female speaker in the annals of the regional legislative arm. The new speaker of the Community Parliament, Meimunato Ibrahima from Togo, was elected at the 2024 Second Extraordinary Session of the Sixth Legislature of the Community Parliament in Kano. She emerged the speaker due to the rotation of the speakership of the Community Parliament in alphabetical order in accordance with the provision of Supplementary Act on Enhancement of Power. Mimunasu takes over from the Nigerian leader of the delegation, Senator Barao Jibrin, who was elected the first Deputy Speaker at the inauguration of the Sixth Legislature of the ECOWAS Parliament on April 4, 2024, and had to act as the Speaker to avoid creating a vacuum of leadership at the Community Parliament. And at number 10, the International Court of Justice, ICJ, announced Friday, May 24th, for the South Africa ceasefire request against the Israeli military invasion of Rafa. South Africa has petitioned the International Court of Justice for emergency measures to order Israel to cease its military operations in the Gaza Strip, including in Rafa City, where it is pressing an offensive. The rulings of the ICJ, which judges on disputes between states, are binding, but it has no power to enforce them. But a ruling against Israel would increase the international legal pressure after the International Criminal Court's top prosecutor said Monday he was seeking arrest warrants for top Israeli 
and Hamas leaders. That's it on what's happening. Thanks for watching.